Live Friday afternoon, folks. It's hard to believe Friday's rolled around again. Ted Ralston here hosting our show, Where the Drone Leads, on Think Tech Hawaii with one of our favorite and uh, frequent flyer guest, Mike Elliott of Drone hey. Services Hawaii. Thanks for coming on, uh, Mike. Thanks again, Ted. Really appreciate being on the show and cool. uh, really excited for the future of Hawaii and where this technology is leading. That's a, did you read that off the script? That's uh, perfect. That's yeah. great. But there's I mean, cards here. You can read all the cards hanging around the place, and they're all good script cards. Uh, Mike, um, we're taking you away from your business. You should be out making money at this point. You're giving your time to us here, and uh, appreciate that very much. Well, it's, it's okay. This, I mean, an educational piece for the community is really go. big uh, in helping uh, not only individuals, uh, folks that work in the government, but also businesses understand the technology and how it can benefit them. I think that's pretty important. And that's one of the things this show is all about, is bringing information like what you've got to the public and to other people, as agencies and such, so they can get a glimpse once a week and what's taking place in the world of droneism. In fact, since we met, last talked and met, uh, there's been a lot of change. Uh, and, and FAA rules came out recently, the educational interpretation and such, get videos to show here to the folks. And uh, yeah, we've also changed the format of the show. It's down to half an hour now. So yeah. it used to be 45 minutes. Are we going so to have to speed it up? We speed it up, pack the whole thing in, get our messaging in there, and then read the, card, the, the cue cards on the way out. And, 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 and stay on the script the whole time. That's, Can't that's do uh, okay, you got it. So Mike, um, it's been, what, uh, four or five months since you uh, left your real job and took on an unreal job. Yeah, and, you know, it was a bit of a leap for us. Uh, you know, we, we realized where this industry was going, but it was a bit of a leap of faith, uh, you know, to leave a good-paying job and then, uh, you know, wonder how things were going to plan out. Wonder how. Um, and going where no one's been before. Well, true. And when we look at what's uh, going on here in Hawaii, uh, you know, we, we are one of the few, if not only the only business that's doing kind of that full 360. We do uh, sales, we do various services under our current 333 exemption. And, uh, you know, we also um, are active in repairs. We're active in uh, STEM and other programs to help with educational aspects because we see educating a workforce as a, a, a big component of our business also. And so what you're actually doing is providing a full service anywhere from you provide the operation for somebody, you provide the equipment for them, you provide training and, 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 and maintenance and such, uh, anything associated with the world of commercial drone operations. And that's where all this new change has come about, right? That you're earning under a 333 exemption, which was a loophole that the FAA allowed us all to operate under. And now we'll be making a change again right. into the dimension of the... So that, yeah, and that was the good thing that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, after uh, being delayed for quite some time, uh, the FAA finally announcing their Part 107 rule set. Uh, so the biggest thing that people were uh, waiting on or they knew about was that we wouldn't have to have a pilot's license anymore to fly. And then, But at the same time, there is also a licensing test for a drone operator uh, that you have to take. And we've been going through... Uh, the 600 plus pages of uh, rules that were released. There was a summary sheet that most people queued in on what was on the summary sheet, but there's a lot of other things that are actually inside the document itself uh, that are kind of the details as to how all this is going to be executed. Including the thinking the FAA went through as it dealt with the 34,000 um, comments that came in from the proposed rulemaking. True. And they had to deal with each one of those, and then there's some residue of that shows up in that 624 pages Right. of information, narrative information, five telephone books thick worth of yeah. close-packed type, explaining all of their reasoning and all of their right. logic in right. terms of how the rules have come forth today. So, you know, kind of a quick summary, though. What, what it really, uh, the, like I said, biggest thing is pilot license requirement is removed, and you can be a commercial operator. But uh, at the same time, what you're doing is you're ap operating in the national airspace, and that's where they want you on par with uh, manned aviation and the level of knowledge that you Not a bad idea. Have. And we've seen one of the uh, practice exams that they've already released, and it looks very much like a sport private, private pilot type of uh, exam with some of the questions that are on there. And we see that as being a bit of a challenge for some folks is being able to pass it. it the test is going to cost 150 bucks. Uh, it's 150 bucks every time you fail and come back, too. So, <laughs> so you it get can to try it again? Do you ever expensive. run out of options? I don't think you run out, but I, I, you have a two-week period before you can come back and actually well, take the exam. Well, business plan for the FAA might be to have a lot of failures, right? It, yeah. it produces a lot of money. Well, I think what's really important is that, uh, you know, one of the things that we've been looking at and working on for the past uh, really th you know, three months uh, or so um, with a certified flight instructor is developing a program that can act as a, an educational gateway to um, 
prepare for this exam and have the uh, resources and knowledge necessary to be able to pass the test pretty much the first time out or pretty close if you study uh, you know afterwards so we're going to make an announcement Monday uh, for this course that we're going to be offering it's a part basically a part 107 prep course taught by a certified flight instructor and, that's and a key, the, if I can interrupt for a moment that's a key message having a certified flight instructor present this that means someone who's, <laughs> been, who's in that business in, in business of flight in, in flight instruction and training is right. going to actually manage this program for you, this training program. True. And so we're actually going to get the, uh, the curriculum is going to go under just a, uh, a review, kind of a quick check, get a little bit of a blessing for hopefully from the local FISDO office here just to say, hey, Makes here's sense. all the stuff that's in here. Uh, here's how we've kind of merged uh, the traditional flight training that's required and then some of the elements of um, the drone uh, operator license piece that we're looking at for the 107 that's going to be uh, part of this overall exam. But this, this level of formal training and the need to take the training in order to pass the test and get a certification really represents a change from the way we've been dealing with drones in the past. Under exemptions and under different forms of waivers and under model airplane rules is one thing. But now there's a, a degree of, um, of, uh, of professionalism coming into the game caused by this rule change. And so people are going right. to be taking a step up in competence in order to be part of this game. And I suspect there's going to be a deterrent to quite a few people who just don't have the mental capital to go into it and spend that much time and deal with yeah. all the updates and such. And They'll turn to you and have you do the operation for them in many cases rather than having them generate yeah, the qualifications. You know, we've worked really hard, uh, you know, my uh, partners, George Purdy, my wife Ellen, a lot of the guys that we work with, that we fly with, have worked very hard to figure out uh, exactly how the FAA wants us to operate. Uh, we've got COAs, uh, the Certificate of uh, Authority for um, Operations uh, that are pending for various locations all throughout Hawaii. We've got uh, some that are already issued for certain locations to fly in uh, or near uh, various areas that normally are off limits for flight. And we're working on another that uh, for out in the Kalai There's one right area. here, as a matter of fact. Yeah, so did. the uh, talk, Pearl Harbor Project, uh, this was uh, just a wonderful opportunity for us. Uh, Tim Gray of the World War II Foundation contacted us a few months back about shooting some drone aerials at Pearl Harbor. and. Being one to never say no, we said, we'll figure this out, and yes, we're going to make this happen. Uh, I used to work over there, so I knew a lot of people, and I knew how the process worked uh, in being able to do some events over at Pearl Harbor. But the biggest thing was, this was something that was new, and it was the first time. Um, it took us about three months to get through the entire process with the FAA and the base, getting permission to be able to do this. And then we came over there with a team of six people uh, to be able to shoot this. Uh, we doubled up on the uh, pilot. We had an assistant for the pilot, uh, our camera operator, an assistant, you know, backing everything up. We had, uh, you know, with visual observers, um, you know, just trying to do everything that we could to uh, demonstrate a, uh, like I said, a safe and professional event and always leaning towards safety in everything that we did. So, uh, you know, it was very much a pleasure to do it. Uh, there's a promo piece on the World War II Foundation.org site for the film that's being narrated by Tom Selleck, so that's coming soon. What I like about this video in particular is that it, it shows so many aspects of what the professional drone, the commercial professional drone community is all about doing it right. I, I really enjoyed the fact that you guys have your uh, the FAA designation of your status on the back of your uh, safety jackets. So anybody, any law enforcement guy or anybody who's got a question what's going on, they, it's right there. Right, it, it was, it was something that we right saw there. as a way to just, uh, one point is, you know, point us out and so people wouldn't maybe necessarily wouldn't uh, you know if somebody came up uh, they would say oh okay these guys are the ones that are supposed to be here it's right. just uh, you know we're, we're we also you know we have hard hats for some of the jobs we do we bring all our own gear um, but we wanted to show kind of how you got some of these shots and then kind of what it looks like you know from the ground and from the air and then for people to see this and kind of say oh wow okay I I get it. I see what this is all about. So you see that aspect of it too. Not only do you see how you actually operated and how you um, indicated and expressed yourself to any, anybody who might come up by the way you put your signage up and such, you're also showing here the nature of the information that can be collected, the quality yeah. of the video and the smoothness of the video and the stability of the shot and such. And in fact, shot framing is a big part of this. So it is. I mean, a lot of times what you end up doing, uh, one of the great things about a drone is you can immediately review footage. Uh, you can go back and reset for a shot while you're in the air and you got plenty of battery and stuff. 
hey, you know, hey, back out a little bit more. Let's, you know, let's slow this down uh, a little higher. As opposed to 1500 bucks an hour for a... For a well, uh, well, at the low end for a helicopter right, or something, yeah. yeah. So oh. it, it makes it a lot of fun, uh, you know, but it does give you a lot of flexibility and, like I said, does reduce cost. So not only in, the, uh, in this aspect of it, but um, a lot of operations that you do, um, drones can put high-tech sensing capability uh, at low cost into people's hands in areas where they never thought of using it before. Uh, or actually put it in your clients' system. hands and if, yeah. they, if they don't want to actually get the capability and the, and the, and the, uh, the cert certifications and licensing themselves. Again, I, I just think that video is so useful because it shows the process of how you actually did it. It shows the quality of the results that come back and it shows it all being done transparently out in the open with all definitions and identifications present. So anybody who has a need for that kind of new perspective on real estate, on uh, 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 geography, on, on uh, topographical situations, on reefs, on whatever the place may be where a different perspective is going to generate new information, can get a hold of you yeah, and can do it themselves through your help or can have you take care of so it for we, them. We, uh, we've got a number of different projects going to. We're helping uh, some local companies that are no realizing that the new rule set's coming into play, trying to get a head start on some things. Uh, there's a company who has a, uh, a hyperspectral sensor that they want to mount to a drone and um, we're working with them to actually be able to fly it so they can actually collect data with their hyperspectral sensor that they've developed and uh, de building out a platform that can power it and you know, how, how are they collecting the data, you know, what do they need from us so that, you know, we can best figure out how to um, get this thing in the air and get them what they need. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the challenges are always out there and uh, the technology is, uh, you know, just getting better and better every day to make this uh, something that is more commonplace uh, for benefiting, I mean, uh, society overall, really, in some of the data that you can collect and how rapidly you can turn this around and use it. And when you, sp when you say rapidly, also, in, in a lot of respects, we're actually rapidly moving into this domain of commercial drone operations. I mean, this video you showed and the, the description you've had of the various other work you're doing, wouldn't have been possible a year ago. A year ago, we would just been filling out 333 exemptions, trying to figure out what that's all about. How, what, what does the FAA want? How's this all going to work? How about the landowners? How about the privacy and all those other issues? Well, those are being solved one at a time. Right. And the, the, this is turning from an art into a practice. And uh, Mike, I just want to once again congratulate you for having the courage to, to lean forward that way and do well, it thanks. in the way you've been doing it. Appreciate it's, uh, it. Well, it's uh, something else too for the other folks that maybe are out there wanting to do this or are doing this and want to continue on this you know i think it's it's up to us is if we want to be responsible uh, business individuals who are trying to promote this as a profession that we should go out of our way to operate professionally and follow the rules that are out there and you know that safety should always be the default in every action and operation that you do we've never lost a craft we've never had a crash uh you know we we haven't had any of those problems and in big part it's because of the um the preparation that we do, the practice that we do, and then sometimes, you know, there's certain jobs it's like, no, I can't fly there or I can't do that, and just saying, you know, no. Uh, there are other folks out there that will uh, take on some of these uh, risks, and uh, they've had problems and they've had issues and stuff. It just isn't worth it. Uh, you know, in what the long goes run. through my mind. We, back in October, I think it was, or maybe September of last year, we had a, the first gathering of the Professional Drone Association, so to speak. Maybe it's time for that again, especially. With the, with the 107 on the, on, the, on the table these days and with the status and the and best practices that you've been able to establish, maybe it's time to host that group. Yeah. I shouldn't say to you host it again like uh, you did it last time. It was fun. But, yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, but not just me. I think there's other folks out there, too, that are learning um, you know, through some of the actions and operations and their experiences that they're doing. So I think it's a, a, you know, kind of a, uh, once, like it was when we met a year, it was kind of a community-based event as to, hey, how do we do this and how do we move ahead? There's some other changes coming around too in the university and the state, we, which we should sort of bring them all together. And let's talk about that after this, after our first break here. Sure. Welcome to thinktechhawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi, your host. The topic is Asia and Reveal. We do it on monthly basis on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Be sure to check the schedule. See you. Aloha. Join us at TEDx Honolulu 2016. It's at the Blaisdell, July 9th from 10 to 5. The discount code is R-A-C-H-A-E-L underscore T-E-D-X-H-N-L. See you then.
Second half of our show, Where the Drone Leads. Uh, Ted Ralston here hosting us at uh, Think Hack Hawaii and Mike Elliott, once again, Hi. from Drone Thanks Services again. Hawaii. Appreciate it, Ted. Uh, we got to put your phone number up there so people can get sure. a hold of you. Uh, well, that's pretty easy. 844 yeah. Drone 50, uh, if you have any questions. It's, it's not 808, right? It's no, 844 not 808. Is 844. Area code. So it's an 800 number. It's like an 800 number. 844 Drone 50. Drone 50, 50 estate, something right. like that. Is that how you thought so, that up? Yeah, it can reach, clever. reach one of us. Uh, you know, we'll try to answer as quick as we can and get right back to you, uh, but we try to answer every call as soon as it comes in. Well, what we were talking about just before the break and during the break is that certainly the perception I've got is that we had a lot of rough edges in the last year or so. We had a lot of unknowns. We had a lot of uh, different ways that the FAA issues could be addressed and solved and worked and there's issues. There was uh, the emergence of the rapid growth of the, th of the 333 exemptions to generate some form of commercial activity. Now we have the Rule 107 coming out, which is, uh, is actually here. Yeah. August 29th, I think it becomes... Law. Yeah, I've and, already, uh, I've already, yeah, we got folks yep. signed up to take the exam as soon yep. as it's available, probably that day or the so next there's day. There's such a much yeah. transition here, and it's all heading in a very, uh, or it should head in a very professional direction with a community of practice and with best practices and this sort of controlling, social controlling mechanism in order to make it a success. Yeah, and, and you're probably the lead in how that might all want to go forward. So I think it's your responsibility, Michael to collect the other people here in Hawaii that are involved and generate we're, this. We try to help them and stuff. Activity. We try to inform them. You know, we're going to have some amount of rogue operators that aren't, are going to just say, I'm not going to do that. I can do what I want. Who's, who says you can tell me what to do? Uh, eventually, they'll go by the wayside because what's going to happen is, is that just like any, any other profession out there and stuff, uh, you need a plumber, you need an electrician. You're going to go to somebody who's a professional, qualified, trained, certified, uh, the dealer for that particular, you know, air conditioning unit you need, whatever it is, that's where you go. You don't go to some guy who's got something scrawled on the side of his truck in uh, spray paint, you know, saying he fixes air conditioning. So, so we're talking about you, a state you basically change. have a well, yeah, you have a bit of a, but it's an awareness piece on yeah. people who are actually hiring you, that they understand that there are folks out there operating by a professional standard, following the law and the rules and that uh, eventually the rogue operators will go by the wayside. So maybe a, maybe a product of this commercial drone association is, is that, a best practices that this community obeys, or at least is aware of, uh, here in Hawaii. Well, it could be, and, or something. I think what businesses need is some way to identify uh, who's legal <laughs> and who's not. And you know what we do is we go out of our way to, we share all that information with our potential clients as we give them uh, you know, here's a copy of our exemptions. Here's a copy, a cert you know, certificate of insurance. Uh, you know, whatever they need to uh, make themselves feel confident and comfortable. And then we tell them what the requirements are under which we're allowed to fly. We share that with them also, so that we know that here are the requirements for things I can and cannot do, uh, so that they're well aware before we ever contract with them. And that's all part of the whole education process here as well, because it is a very confusing world for people on the outside to understand. Are you a hobbyist? Are you in education? Are you under an exemption? Are you under a public aircraft ops call? Or are you under FAR 107? Yeah. Five different ways that operations can occur. They all look the same. In fact, you probably could conceive a situation where the same person and the same equipment is operating under one of any one of those five domains at any one time. Right, and but the you, rules can't, are you can't sit there and swap hats halfway through or or wear one to fool somebody for another. And there's there's folks that's, out there doing that now. Right? And what's going yeah. on now is that there are folks out there that have been saying, uh, uh, this is kind of, you know, um, oh, uh, I'm only charging people for the photo and video processing. I didn't charge them to take mm. the photos with the drone uh, or the video. A loophole. A as if that really matters, right? You're fooling anybody. And the FAA said, no, you can't do that. There's others that are out there that don't specifically mention that they use drones in the stuff that they get, and it's not in any of the paperwork that you sign with them, but when you see any of the final product that's in there, and uh, some of those folks have flown in uh, inside of five miles of airports, and it's well known to the local FAA who some of these people are, you know, and it's, you know, those are the ones that are, are ruining it for folks that are trying to operate properly. Um, you know, we're in the process of finalizing a, a COA to operate out Kalailoa uh, area out in the airport there. Uh, it takes time and it, there's a process and, you know, you can do these things. It's just you have to be willing to put forth the effort and understanding to do it properly. Key word is time because you got a lot of setback time in terms of um, getting hold of the right person, for example, or understanding what the issues are that have to be covered. Then you have to generate MOAs or some other document that says we understand what we're doing and we have the approval to do this, assemble it all together. 
apply for an exemption or a, a extension of a call if you need to. Uh, and, and under 107, you may have to apply for a waiver of some kind. There's a lot of waiver functionality going on there. So there's a three months is not an unreasonable setback yeah, is so it for a complicated we've situation. Got a, we've got a pending contract. We've got some, uh, well, as soon as we get back, uh, we're going to be doing night operations. And yes, you can apply to do night operations, and there's a way to do it, to fly at night legally, uh, to take photographs for a particular project that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be working in some areas that normally drones don't fly, uh, specifically for this project. But there's a way to do it, and there's a way to do it legally and properly. It just takes time. And to get everybody to sign off on it and say yes, and then once that happens, it's just business as usual. You know what I'd like to do is, uh, over time here, as you've been on this show so many times and brought your expertise and knowledge and passion to the table here and let the people see about it, there's a number of business aspects or business uh, segments that could benefit from that level of understanding and that level of confidence. I'm thinking of uh, the journalism folks at this point in time, media and print journalism. In fact, this station is a, yeah. I think we do print journalism here, or video journalism. Yeah. Um, getting the journalism community to be fully aware of what is available, what's capable, where the limits are, and what can't be done. Yeah. It could be, be something they could use on a regular basis. Some, I mean, they, they already have vans that are out running around capturing stories all around the islands anyway. Um, you know, if you were able to train somebody properly to be able to use a drone and actually capture some additional aerial footage, uh, it just enhances the story Absolutely. And, uh, and maybe better tells the story than somebody standing on the ground. Such as the Pearl Harbor video you just yeah. took us through. And so, in six weeks from now, about that, this can all be done with under 107. Yeah. And uh, so we ought to really get with the journalism people quickly and let them see that capability, see that, understand, show them the video. So like I said, we'll, uh, you know, it, you don't have to take a training course or anything. Uh, you know, but after seeing the tests and knowing what's involved um, and then knowing the level of knowledge of a lot of people that are looking to take this test, uh, yeah, there's a big delta there. And so our thought process was, why don't we figure out a way we can help people prep so they don't have to spend money, 150 bucks a pop to take this test until they pass it. And uh, it, you know, just better enhance them to operate too. So the, the last piece of that class uh, in, in discussing this was, okay, test prep. But why don't we spend some time talking about how do we do commercial operations? And so we're going to spend a piece of that class uh, prepping them all the way through. Once how do again, I, your best practices. Yeah, how does somebody, you know, somebody comes to you and they want to do a job? Well, what do I do and how do I prepare for that? And what do I need and what websites should I use? And how do I file a NOTAM? And how do I look to see if there's a temporary flight restriction? Or how do I read a VFR sectional, which is going to obviously be part of the course anyway. But you know, you have to be able to talk in the same language that pilots talk. Aviator speak. National airspace operations. And this is about the national airspace integration piece. So you have to be on the same, uh, you know, speaking the same language on the same playing field so that you are integrated into that process. And that's, that's one of the most important aspects of this transition as we go into the 107 because it's going to provide a a equivalence between manned aviation and unmanned aviation right. and they'll be dealing with the same issues and dealing with the same <clears throat> the same approach to the same issues so as opposed to having a potential harm or risk it's going to be ameliorated and mitigated by virtue of everybody understanding the, the proper procedures and operate right. them together there'll still be the rogues as, in yeah. fact, so you still have rogues. some of the same things you know about the the restrictions that you have with regard to airports yeah. and you know, um, you know, flying over, you know, crowds. Some of that's got, uh, that's one of the things that kind of went away somewhat in there. It's the 500 foot, foot rule, book, yeah. which is kind of nice too, because it was pulled, and this is what I know where it came uh, from. Pulled from helicopter, <laughs> yeah, yeah, from movie stuff from helicopter, and, and people acknowledged that and said, 500 feet, that makes no sense. Uh, but it was in there, and it, so people latched on to it. It didn't require a change in the law, it was just an, uh, imposing yeah. an existing law on right. the system. And right. it's just something that was out there, and, and you know, so that's kind of gone too, and there's some uh, wording in there with regard to that that's beneficial for the community also. But it still comes down to safe operations, planning things out, uh, shooting things properly, uh, you know, knowing your equipment, preparing your equipment, maintaining it, and then keeping a record log of that too since you're operating this, uh, you know, and the FAA could come and inspect your records at any time, you know, what kind of maintenance have you done? Where, where's your logs of all your flights? You still have to report all this stuff on a monthly basis. And that's something that we want to help people understand and prepare them for so that they 
uh, are compliant and don't have any of these problems in the future. Let's make sure, Zuri, that we get Mike's contact information up here again on the screen one more time before we come to the end of this segment. There we have one eight four four drone fifty drone services Hawaii, yeah. and anyone there will take your take so, the call. Yeah. So we're uh, our plan for this uh, prep course. We're going to start here in Oahu. Uh, we're going to be doing some uh, courses over on Maui. And then we're going to do a little bit of a road show on uh, Kauai and the Big Island. And, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there and feel out the, uh, the demand. But um, uh, I know we have a lot of businesses that have already uh, come to us and said, we're going to fill your class. Let us know when it's ready. Uh, because they want to get out there and start using drones on the job site. That's good. And we got to yeah. get to the, uh, the, again, the journalism people and the other people who are involved in publicizing this so that we make sure that... Uh, uh, the, the fact that the rule changes has happened and what that means to people, what that means to businesses who want to get into the operation or uh, uh, police and fire agencies and yeah. such and, and, yeah. and Department of Health and Red Cross and folks who are involved in emergency management. Uh, there's so much opportunity that's been created by this recent rule change and uh, you're the conduit to get between yeah. People who aren't there's, there today. There's opportunity and, who want and to then there. there's, uh, there's a bit of a learning curve, but once again, you know, we had, uh, it was a guy from Hawaii, uh, Honolulu Fire Department came by, not about drone picking up something at the store and, and was just talking and stuff. And uh, he was uh, telling me how um, it'd be nice, you know, we could start to use these things at some point someday. And, you know, I, I explained to him, I said, if you guys think of these things as just another tool, like you do everything else that's on that truck when you pull up to a fire, uh, a car crash, you're out looking for somebody, you just think of it as a tool, then it's not that big a deal. When you separate it out as something special or different, uh, then that's the mystique, that's that mystery that you've created, and, and that doesn't need to exist. If you just think of it as a tool, uh, it's just one more thing you have available and that, to you. That tool would be available to journalists, to hospitals, to Red Cross, yeah. anybody yeah. else who's even, even the station here that yeah. we're sitting in. And so uh, this actually brings us to the end of our, our very shortened span here, Mike. And, well, it's been uh, good. good. It's been unbelievable that we're here at the yeah. end already. But so much want to thank you for coming well, on. Thanks board. again, Ted. I really uh, appreciate it. Because uh, we need to tell your story a lot here. We need to get this story out to people so they can uh, become aware of what's available right. and follow the right procedures going forward. Yeah. So we really want to be uh, um, the folks that, uh, you know, try to help some of the businesses here in Hawaii that have expressed interest over the months prior to the rule change. Yeah. You know, they just weren't sure where to go or what to do. Uh, now is really the opportunity. So what you should start thinking about is you can buy equipment and start working on training individuals uh, prior to the exam coming out and kind of work to start to get a program in place so that when the rule change happens and you've got tests, folks that have taken the test, you're ready to get to work. So do your homework. The time is now to start doing it. And 844-Drone50, and you got it. Easy enough. Folks, we'll see you next Friday. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Appreciate board. it, Ted. Thank you very much.